Hey guys, this is Country Echoes. Today I'm going to be making a remake of the um, Tomato Frog Care video because the last one was a pretty good video, but I have uh, I've had a lot more experiences with the Tomato Frog, and I now um, know have a lot more information on them, and I can tell you guys uh, a lot more things about the Tomato Frog to help you care for them. Okay. So I'm just going to keep the camera right here till it's uh, necessary to move it. So right here is, um, as you can see, my male tomato frog, who is, um, I think, a year, about a year and a half old. A little bit less than a year and a half old. So um, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you some facts about the tomato frog. Tomato frogs, um, males are much smaller than females. Females can actually get about the size of a... Baseball, I think. Um, males are substantially smaller. Um, they secrete a almost glue-like substance when they are uh, think they are um, in trouble, like they might be eaten, and it can actually uh, glue the mouth of a predator shut, uh, which is a really cool um, thing. I've act he's sometimes when you when if, the, if they mistake your fingers for food, they'll accident they'll nip you. And, um, you can, your, sometimes your hands, your, fi sorry, your fingers will feel kind of uh, sticky. That's actually happened to me, uh, once or twice. And also when they are angered, they have small black, uh, not black, brown spot-like color, spot-looking coloration on their back. As you can see on the top of his back where it's a little bit yellow, you can see the darker markings. They seem to change, he, he, my, uh, Elmo, when he's angered or irritated, seems to change, like, those protrude, well, not protrude, they, uh, seem much more pronounced, and, um, uh, they also expand when they are mad, like, they blow them, like, they make, uh, their sides expand out to make themselves look bigger to the predator, okay? Also, these guys are from Madagascar, so they're going to be expecting a humid, uh, environment, which I'll get on to after a while. For your setup, I recommend using a 10-gallon uh, tank. Um, or you can, some people use a 12 by 12 by 18 Exoterra, which um, it doesn't have much ground space. I've seen, pe uh, seen some videos with people using that, but that doesn't have too much ground space. I would not recommend that. For... Um, so for an adult, uh, tomato frog, I recommend a 10 gallon because these guys will, uh, between cleaning cages, they will have set different burrows. Um, so you want to give them plenty of space to burrow in. Okay. So I'm going to show you my setup. I have, like I said, mine in a 10 gallon aquarium. Um, I'm going to start over here. Eh, plant move okay so as you can see right there right there is my uh, little water dish these guys uh, drink through their skin or absorb liquid through their skin so it's important to provide them with a little soaking dish I don't think they're the best of swimmers they're kinda like Pac-Man frogs not exactly the best of swimmers so don't give them an extremely deep water dish um, it, this is a uh, just a, I think this is a medium size. It's perfect. He he gets in there when um, and usually they use the restroom in there. So I clean mine every other day, like rinse the water out. And what I put into the water is a uh, AquaSafe Tetra uh, AquaSafe with whatever this stuff right here. Um, adds some. It uh, takes the chlorine and the junk out of tap water so you don't have to waste money on just using spring water and also I think adds some extra things okay so I'm gonna move on along the cage so as you can see right there the big plant I have that to make the tank look better and these that this plant can also benefit the tomato frog um, they will get under these leaves makes them feel very secure because these are a burrowing animal okay if you can see that little bump back there and a little hump in the soil and the wait I'll get to what the substrate is. Um 
that is actually a cork round covered you can actually see a little bit of it that he's kicked off um, covered with eco earth which I recommend as your substrate uh, uh, I recommend that as your substrate holds great humidity and if your animal gets some of it in its mouth he can poop it out if he's heated correctly but um, I use this cork round as a just a, a hide that's already made for him because that's what he usually retreats to when he first uh, gets into his new clean cage because he's a little stressed out and um, he'll just go ahead and get into the one burrow that has already been made. It kind of looks really cool, pretty cool. Um, for So substrate, I recommend EcoEarth. I have, I think, two and a half or three inches of EcoEarth. Um, great substrate. I also add some moss. This is, I think... Uh, what kind of moss is it? Can't think of the name. But uh, I think it's by Zilla, or Zilla sells it. Um, I, just in case of causing your animal impaction, don't rip it into extremely small chunks. Rip it into smaller chunks so it can hold good humidity, and if he accidentally gets it in his mouth, he can easily... What's up? <laughs> looking at me. He can easily sp uh, spit it out, okay? Um... I recommend having a cork flat or some type of maybe a rock or a piece of wood in there for them to burrow under. Uh, he's actually come out when I started speaking. He must think he's getting food or something interested <laughs> in what's going on. Um, so they can burrow themselves under there, have some moss under that too. Moss supplements with humidity. If you get sprayed down good. Oh, it's sphagnum moss. No, no, it's sphagnum moss. Okay. Um, right here is a, it used to be covered up with a, Eco Earth, it's a little, he doesn't use it, but it's pretty neat. A coconut, sh coconut, and I uh, covered it up with Eco Earth, and I have the little hole you can't see because it's covered up by the leaf, and he can get in there and just chill. Um, I also, yeah, I told you about the plant. So, that is your setup. I don't want to make this video too long. Okay. Oh, and before I get to the next subject, I'm going to try to do a contest, as you have, may have seen my contest maybe video. I just gotta find, uh, get, ask Luke Hutch Reptiles or Insert Reptiles to judge it for me. So, it probably will be going on. So, I'm gonna start off with humidity for, like, my heating, heating stuff. So, humidity. These are a tropical species, so I recommend a humidity of 60... Hello, 60 to um, 80 percent, maybe even higher. Uh, to achieve this humidity, I actually I got this uh, little tip from Triple O Reptile. Pour some water into the soil about once a week to keep the soil moist, and that's where your animal, your tomato frog, is going to burrow. And um, it's a, just a great way to keep holding humidity and uh, keep the humidity up. Okay. I also spray the tank down once in the, pretty thoroughly in the morning, pretty thoroughly at night, okay? Because it kind of um, relates to a, like, a morning, the dew, and, uh, like, the moisture from the morning and when it gets cooler at night when it's a little bit uh, in the rainforest. So, miss morning and night, okay? 60 to 80% humidity. That's a crucial thing for your tomato frog. Okay, for heating... I like to keep my tank at about 85 degrees, so kind of a little, a few degrees less than a leopard gecko, which it should be about 90 degrees for a leopard gecko. Um, I achieved this by using a heat pad over here, which has got some hot, accumulated some hot water stains, but um, he can burrow. If he's cold, he walks over there and kind of leans, doesn't exactly lean on it, but gets close to it, and he can't, and he as uh, he can burrow and over here and get right next to the heat pad. Um, I also, I don't use this light. It's just I have really cruddy lighting in my room and it really irritates me. So I have to put on this thing, uh, this uh, little light up there. Um, for, to heat his tank, I use, hold on just a second. You can watch him. I use, I think this is a 75, yeah, 75 watt Exoterra Night Glow bulb to heat his tank. 
I with the little light fixture I have an adjustable so light fixture so I can uh, kind of turn it to how bright I want it to be and how hot it can be um, I put it the this I think this is by Flukers with the adjustable I can turn it down and up uh, <coughs> and uh, I put it on about two-thirds of the way keeps it at a good 85 degrees and um, and oh yeah keep a hum humidity and a thermo thermometer gauge in your tank okay and remember this is uh, this is what I use to heat his tank mostly kind of you want there I would recommend like an ectothermic set, set up where you have a side with uh, warmth and then a little cooler side with your water dish um, feeding let me get on the feeding and I think that's about it feeding I feed my guy every night uh, one cricket let's just I'm gonna go through the you nasty rubber but gross um, <coughs> I go like this. So let's say on Monday I give him one cricket dusted with, and he's a perfectly healthy weight and everything's good. This is just how I feed my guy so he doesn't get obese. I recommend feeding crickets because they're very easy to digest. For amphibians, it's harder for them to digest foods like um, uh, mealworms, but waxworms are okay. And uh, so let's say on Monday I give him a cricket with uh, calcium dust on it. I shake it up in there, give it to him. Um, then on the next day, I give him two crickets, not calcium dusted. So he gets a food every single night. So a uh, one cricket, two cricket, one cricket, two cricket. Okay. Um, you guys might think that's not enough, but that he I've had him for a while now, and he's in great shape, and uh, he eats every single time I feed him. So... Um, that is how I take, oh yeah, an occasional, oops, sorry about that. Occasionally I will give him a, uh, I will give him a mealworm, just as a treat, calcium dusted. Sometimes uh, I'll give him a wax worm, and sometimes I will give him, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, an earthworm. A good way to make sure they're safe for your, Amphibians are and uh, your and your reptiles is to freeze them for a day, and sometimes they'll actually stay alive, but it kills all the parasites. So that is how I care for my tomato frog. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please um, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, again, thank you for 50 subscribers. I'll see you later. Country geckos.